Welcome back guys, thank you very much for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at replacing a lever flush toilet siphon. So let's say if your toilet's obviously not flushing, you're going to be wanting to see this video. And we're going to be replacing the siphon that's already in there with the Dudley Turbo 88 adjustable duo flush siphon. Now these siphons are quite expensive, they're about 18, 19 quid. But that means once you've installed it into the system, you don't need to take the system back off the wall unless you're swapping the toilet or for further reactive maintenance. Because all you do is you pull this yellow pin out and all of this comes out with it, so this arm stays in there. Not a problem at all. They're brilliant pieces of kit and I highly recommend them. They're a bit more expensive, but you pay for what you get. If you're gonna go cheap, you can get one for about fiver. You're gonna end up taking it back off the wall again. So without any more rambling, let's crack on and get it done. So what we wanna do first is obviously take off the lid, put that somewhere safe, flat on the floor, don't stand it up or anything because you don't want it to fall and break. Then we're going to go ahead and empty the system, the water that's in there. But first we need to isolate it on the isolated valve under the toilet. If you haven't got one, you might have to do it on the stopcock downstairs. It's perfectly fine though, you'd just be without water. So as you can see, it's a bottom entry fill. So we're going to have to turn that horizontally, it's, not, it's already half turned anyway. So I'm going to turn that horizontally like so. You might have one coming in the side up there, that's perfectly fine. It just means you've got a side entry, not a bottom entry fill. Then we want to go ahead and empty this water in here, as we mentioned. I'm going to go ahead and try and flush the toilet several times. You can, however, use any sort of means, like a little jug or anything, and pop it into a bucket, that's perfectly fine. But we're going to try and give it a flush. So we managed to get most of it out there. Great. And again, we can double check that it's not filling as well, so it is isolated properly. I'm going to go ahead and remove the float. We can then get our sponge in and get the rest of the water out below. So you just take the, the float off and you do this by unscrewing it like anything else. See, I've got all this space here to chuck a sponge in there and soak it up and empty it into a bucket. But looking at that fill valve, I'm also going to replace that, but I will do that at a later date. It's not a problem. I don't have one with me now. So as we mentioned, we're just gonna get a bucket and it is good practice to chuck a towel or a dust sheet on top of the toilet as well. We will be using this again for to lay the cistern on, but it just stops any scratches or anything and then getting the blame and everything else. Then we're just gonna lower the sponge in there and soak it up bit by bit. And it's actually surprising how much you do get. Just a normal car sponge, that'll be perfectly fine. So once we've got all of that out, we're then just going to tip it down the toilet so it just goes away. So now we're going to disconnect the overflow if it's not internal, which is down here. And all we're going to do is unscrew that like so and it should just drop down so we can lift it off nicely. Perfect. Just like that. And then in my case, I'm just going to unscrew this here with a spanner and adjustable grips. So we've got our adjustable grips and our spanner. And we'll go ahead and set about it and release the nut. And that's it. And remember guys, you're only using the grips just to support the isolation valve so you don't disturb it off the other pipe. Now you will get water. It's imminent, I'm afraid. Just make sure you've got your towel there. Should only be a little bit because you've drained it all. So once the overflow in the inlet's been disconnected, we're gonna go ahead and remove the two supporting back screws, which is just that one there and that one there. And as you can see, they're just cross heads. After that, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the securing wing nuts at the bottom. As you can see, we've got one on this side and inevitably one on this side, just there. These are most likely only hand tight anyway. Make sure that you don't lose the wing nut or the washer. Put it somewhere safe, like in the windowsill, not in the sink. Once all that is disconnected, we're then gonna lay the towel on the top of the toilet like so, and we're gonna lift it off and lay it down with the bottom pointing outwards so we can do the operation. If you do have any excess water in the bottom, just tip it either down the toilet or in the sink. Now you will find that you've got your securing bolts here. Don't lose them because obviously they go with the wing nuts which secures the system to the pan. So of course you're gonna need those again. 
So you're going to see something like this. Here's your donut washer, that's your supporting plate, and of course, where your siphon is. So now what you're going to do is get your adjustable grips, like that, and you're gonna gently unscrew, gently. Just like that. Now the customer said that they don't want this replacing, that's perfectly fine, we'll just put the old one back on. However, I do have a new washer that I'm just gonna throw in there because I just don't really wanna put that back on. But that's their choice, but I would recommend just buying a, a, a normal close coupling kit like this. Just brand new, they're only about four, four or five quid. You may as well, while, you, while you've got it apart, you may as well do it. So once we've removed that, we're gonna spin it around and we're just gonna slowly pull it out. Perfect. And then all we're going to do is slowly pull it out and unhinge the clip. Very simple. And popping out like so. It just saves undoing this and disconnecting everything here because it's quite close, you see. It's just gonna cause aggro, plus that's stuck on there anyway, I have checked. So here's the old siphon that we've removed and as you can see, that was the problem there, that's why I wasn't flushing. And that's generally what it is. When this plastic splits, obviously it doesn't let the water through. You're not trapping the water, it's just letting it straight through. So that's generally the problem. So we've got our new Dudley kit here. This is a bee's knees. And this is what I meant by pulling the pin out, like that. And then that simply lifts off and comes out and disconnects. And then that stays in the toilet. So then you can just replace that like new. Job done. Pop the pin back in. Sorted. Also guys, make sure you read the instructions so you know that when you're fitting it, you're fitting it correctly. Like with mine, I have to remove the top plug like so. It will depend on what you've got in place already, whether you have to remove the top, bottom or both, or leave them both in. So make sure you read the instructions. So everything now is just in reverse order. So again, flip the handle out like so, and screw it in there like that, making sure that you've got the washer on there, and then we're just gonna drop it into the system and insert it into the hole, just like that. So now we're gonna flip it round and secure the nut on the bottom. So once we're ready, we're gonna pop on our securing plate, ideally a new one, but we shan't go there. Then we're gonna screw it on and secure it with the securing nut. And once your hand tight, you're gonna get your grips and give it a quick nip up. Nothing too crazy and not too tight because you don't wanna break the plastic. Just enough so you feel the resistance. That should do it. Then we're gonna go ahead and put a donut washer in place and reinstall the system. So we're just going to pop our donut washer on there so it's easy enough to just drop the system on. We're first going to get our securing bolts for the square heads. We're going to attach them to the base of the system, like so, so we can just drop them nicely in the holes in the pan and secure them at the bottom with the wing nuts. Just like that. Then we're just going to drop them into those two holes there. So once we've got the system in place, we're gonna go ahead and secure it at the bottom of the wing nuts. Then we're gonna do everything in reverse order. So we're gonna secure the system to the wall, then we're gonna secure the inlet and secure the overflow. So once you're all caught up, don't forget to screw your float back on and then we can go ahead and turn the water on and test. Then we're gonna go ahead and turn the water on. Make sure you've got no leaks. All good. Both sides. Perfect. Then when we're done, we're gonna go ahead and test the flush.
Hopefully this has helped you out guys. If it has, make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.